This free real estate mastermind sponsored by Earth to Orbit is your opportunity to show up with questions, thoughts, anything I can do to help you build your business. I'm committed to helping you do it. Show up Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Central at zoomwithrob.com to learn guaranteed, proven, and repeatable methods that will help you grow your business and your income. Register at zoomwithrob.com and I'll see you there. To learn more about Earth to Orbit, visit earthtoorbittraining.com. Welcome to the Earth to Orbit Real Estate Mastermind. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Depending on what time zone you're tuning in from, this is another episode of the Impossible to Fail Real Estate Mastermind. I'm your host, Rob Stein, and thank you everyone for tuning in today. We got a bigger crowd and we're happy that everyone is here investing their time in their education. Quick question before we start out with the wins. Raise your hand if you're taking time out of your business to be here today. Ha <laughs> ha! See, no one raised their hand because they know my input on this answer. Uh, who can tell me? Let's see, Michelle, why don't you unmute yourself and tell me why didn't you raise your hand for that question where most people normally would? Uh, because I'm actually investing time into my business. Bingo, <laughs> bullseye. That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> because Michelle is investing time into her education today. Uh, and you take like Michelle, Kenneth, um, Matthew, Andrew, all of them are Earth to Orbit students for my sales course, uh, and they're all making money with what they're learning. And if you look at a guy like Matt, who's averaged at least one closing a month since he's joined up with me, Kenneth, same thing, just crushing it. Yes, this is a good investment of your time because you're actually going to make money when you implement what we learn here. And that's what it's all about. So who's going to share some wins that they've had in the previous week before we get rolling? Well, I'll just share that um, I've I've started taking steps. So, so what I'm doing is I'm running my own little accountability mastermind off of your um, training with mm -hmm. with some agents, and I'm so excited because they work full time. So they're doing they're trying to do this part time, and so we hold them accountable. And um, yesterday's meeting was. But well, I was feeling so good because they, you know, I, I challenged them with what they're going to do with the segment or the module that we're mm -hmm. studying. And it was about choosing um, the free lead generations. And mm -hmm. I asked them, you know, what would be the one that you're going to take massive action on? And what is one that you're going to, you know, um, learn and educate yourself more in? So they both gave me their goals and I'm super, super excited. So, so for myself, I've been doing the things that you said, like scheduling open houses, scheduling the new build to make those relationships and stuff. So I'm so excited to see where this is all going. Uh, that's awesome, Michelle. That is really exciting. And I can tell you, you know, the way I run my team here in Austin, we are heavy on the accountability and it makes all the difference. So you're doing everything right. And I'm excited to hear your progress and I can't wait to hear their wins as well. Good deal. All right. Uh, Kenneth, I, it looked like you were going to unmeet yourself. I want you to be safe out there, but if you're able to share a win, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, the uh, client I've been working with for a few months now is finally deciding to uh, wanted to buy. And, you know, that's where the show I'm going to today. So right on. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Very good. Very good. Uh, Maria, why don't you go ahead and share your win in the past week? What happened? Yes. Well, I passed my real estate exam. Um, I chose my brokerage. So I'm just waiting for everything to get finalized and start selling. Right on. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a huge accomplishment passing your exam. Congratulations. Thank you. I had a, I had a pretty, uh, some good real estate wins. Uh, yesterday, I got a call from a, uh, from a soon to be client. It's a buyer uh, prospect I've been following up with for a year just slow nurture campaign. It's all been very passive, right? Very automated because that's the way we do it within the CRM. We set up all these templates, 140 templates, and we plug them in one time. Then we get the automated follow-up going. And uh, all of a sudden, just boom, my phone rang. He said, Rob, my lease is up in a few months. I'm ready to go. I got him connected with my lender and we have a buyer consultation on Friday. So that's going to be great. Um, and uh, we, my team had four closings in the past couple of weeks. So you know, agents out there that are saying, oh, the market's so hard. They're just not working hard. 
You got to know how to work it. The market is awesome for buyers right now. And if you know how to prospect for buyers, like open houses, especially, you know, they're my favorite, man, that is ripe for commissions and helping a lot, a lot of people out there. So let's go ahead and get started on the content for the day. Uh, I just have a quick little mindset bump. As you know, I like to start with something like that. And then we'll just open it up to your questions because I really want to know what I can do to help you today. And this is just a bit of an extension on what we spoke about last week on the fact that habits start as disciplined decisions. That was the topic of last week, right? When we talked about how would you define a habit, everyone was kind of in the general consensus that a habit is something you do that is kind of on autopilot. You don't really have to think about it. It's more muscle memory, but they start as disciplined decisions because there's going to be times that you don't necessarily feel like doing something. Andrew is correct in the chat. He writes 66 days on average. How long does it take to form a habit? 66 days is the average. Sometimes it may take shorter. Sometimes it may even take longer. It A lot of it depends on the habit you're trying to form and how far you are from forming that habit. But in general, you do that about two, two and a half months, you're going to have great consistency there. But on the topic of consistency, and I say this because in my coaching calls with agents, over the past week, um, I've had a good handful of people say, Rob, what tips do you have for consistency? What tips do you have for consistency? And I believe that they were expecting me to give them some kind of like magic, uh, magic fairy dust, you know, for the answer. And so for sure, like Andrew types in time blocking scheduling. Yes, that's right. We could talk about the fact that, uh, have a habit tracker right? Where you mark on, like I have a habit tracker on my fridge. I'm always instilling new habits. And every uh, 66 days, I get a new habit tracker on there for the new habit I'm trying to instill accountability. Yes, 100%, Andrew, well done. Um, there are two things I can tell you for consistency that I found really successful. And I recommend you write this down. One is what I call the say it out loud method. Very fancy name, right? The say it out loud method. I'm going to tell you exactly how it works. Because the thing with consistency, and go ahead and, and, and raise your hand if you agree, or give me a thumbs up if you agree with this statement. When, it talks, when we talk about consistency, it's not like there's something you're forgetting to do. It's something that you know needs to be done, but you don't do it. Lack of motivation, whatever, you make some type of excuse. But it's not that you're forgetting. It's just that you make the decision not to. Do we agree with that? Yes. It's not like all of a sudden the day ends and you go, oh, I forgot to lead generate today or, <laughs> or I forgot to cold call today, right? It doesn't happen that way. Um, it's, it's the fact that there's something you know really should be done and it, it doesn't get done, right? Like Andrew just typed, you had the intention to do it, but you didn't do it. And this method, I'm going to teach you the say it out loud method. This can be applied to anything. It doesn't just have to be real estate. It can be like, oh, you know, you got to go to the gym. You know, you got to make a better nutritional choice, whatever, whatever it might be. Okay. And here's what you do. Say it out loud. It meaning the consequence of what will happen if you don't do the thing. So for example, let's say it comes to cold calling. You got that little butterflies in your tummy. You're relatively new to cold calling. You're making some excuses why you're not feeling it. Say out loud. If I don't cold call today. This is going to get me further from my goals. It's not going to help me. I'm not going to get paid. I'm not going to achieve success. Say it out loud. Let's say it comes down to asking for an appointment. You know you're nervous to ask for the appointment. But as I teach in Earth to Orbit, the goal of every open house, Matt, right, go ahead and unmute yourself. Tell me what is the goal of every open house? Uh, is to secure an appointment. Secure one appointment, at least. Very good. Thank you. On the calendar. And I actually had a coaching call with an agent on my team that's crushing the open houses, but he's just a little bit nervous to schedule the appointment. Not because he doesn't want to, but just because he's afraid he's going to sound pushy, which is a pretty common concern. And I told him the same thing. Say it out loud right before the open house. If I don't ask for the appointment, I'm only pushing my own finish line further away. I'm not going to get paid. I can't help people. I can't launch my career if I don't ask for the appointment. 
The thing is, when we when we don't say it out loud, it just stays in our brain. It's just internal. And so it's easier for us to just not take action. But there's something I found and I didn't I just kind of figured this out. There's just something when you say it out loud. That kind of flips this switch that really makes you take action and makes you way less likely to not do the thing you're supposed to do. If you know you're supposed to get to the gym and you don't feel like going, say it out loud. If I don't exercise today, I'm pushing myself further from my goal. I'm not going to get to where I want to be. I'm not helping myself. I'm not helping my life, right? If you say it out loud, I guarantee you, you are infinitely more likely to do the thing that you don't want to do. And remember that when you're faced with what you feel like doing and what is necessary, and if those two things are different, do what is necessary. And saying it out loud will make you a lot more likely to do that. Just a little pro tip, pro hack for you. Michelle, what you got on that? Yeah, so so what is what is the... Um... The flip side too, because most most teaching, this like this is the first time I'm hearing to to say that um downfall of it out loud as opposed mm -hmm. to saying a positive affirmation like I will secure an appointment today because I am gonna talk to I I will ask you know what I mean? Yeah, I will yeah. Yeah, and that's and there's nothing wrong with the positive affirmation. Um here's my opinion on that. I think being motivated by loss is equally or more powerful than being motivated by the positive. Because more often than not, even with a positive affirmation, people are less likely to take action, I find, than being faced with the reality of inaction. Because inaction is most people's home base. That's just how it is. It's nice to say a positive affirmation, but generally that still doesn't get it done. So if you say, I will, I will set the appointment today because I am a top performing agent and I'm going to get a closing. That's something that's positive that you're hoping. And if, it, and if you still don't do it, you're still only focused on the positive. But if you say, if I don't set appointment today, I'm not going to get paid. I'm not going to put food on the table and I'm going to have to quit and get a job. That's a lot. I mean, to me, I think that's a lot more like, holy crap, I better get my ass in gear then, oh, and I'm going to do all the positive, shiny rainbow stuff, you know, like, and, and, I'm, and do what works for you. If you find that um, staying on the positive keeps you really motivated, that's great. But I have found in, at least for myself and the agents and entrepreneurs in all industries that I coach and work with, because I work with entrepreneurs outside of real estate, the, the consequence is, re is, is reality. Whereas a positive is like the hopeful future, but the consequence, there's no denying the consequence. You know, it's easy. Uh, I'll, I'll go again because I'm, you know, I'm a bodybuilder. So it's so if I go on the nutrition thing, I'm going to eat healthy today because it's going to keep me healthy and get me further to my goal of weight loss or whatever it is. And then if you don't, you say, well, that's okay. I'll eat healthy tomorrow. Because, but if you say, if I don't eat healthy today, I'm going to continue gaining weight. It's not, I'm going to be unhealthy. It's going to, right? And you're really faced with the reality of that. It, it's a lot different. It's just a lot different. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with focusing on the positive, but I think if more people focused on the reality of the negative, they probably would take more action. All right. Well, let's get to the mastermind portion of this. What I want you to do is show up with your questions. I want you to be able to leave this call, say, man, that was an 11 out of 10. Rob really helped me move the needle in the right direction. So what questions, what can I help you with your businesses today, y'all? So the issues I'm kind of run, running into now is uh, at my open houses, uh, setting the appointment, getting it, having a real good conversation, kind of focusing on that one person while others are in there. And then when it comes down to the appointment, they tell me, oh, I've been working with the realtor already, even after I ask, are they working with one? And they say no. 
Mm. Okay. When, so, so it sounds like at some point you ask them if they're working with a realtor, they say no. And then later they say they are. Do, are you asked, what's the follow-up question to that, Kenneth, if they say I am working with a realtor? Uh, do you have a signed representation agreement? Excellent. And, very, very good. Correct. And what do they say to that? Yes. Okay. Uh, so let's, I'll address both aspects of your question. Cause one was, you know, I'm staying focused on this person or this couple or this family. And there's other folks. Am I, am I missing out on anything there? And then number two is they're telling me they're not working with an agent. And then they say they are. So on the first one, I'm a firm believer that when you are engaged with someone, you do not unengage them to engage someone else. And if you look in Earth to Orbit on the 16 open house on-site demo videos, I actually illustrated that one where there's a couple. And, in, and remember, in those videos, I show you the good way and the bad way. And in the bad way, there are people that are coming in and I stop talking to the folks I'm talking to and I introduce myself and welcome them and ask them a couple questions and then, right? And then in the good one, they just walk on by. They just walk on by, okay? Now to some folks that may be counterintuitive. They may be like, hey, what, what's that about? You don't wanna ignore anyone, okay? But let me ask, wh what, what do you think are the negatives of stopping your current engagement to engage other people. What are some reasons that that could be detrimental? They don't think you really care about them. You're just looking to for the next quick buck or a sale. Absolutely right. And that is, I believe, number one on the list. There are others, but I think that's first and foremost, for sure. Um, re realistically, realtors, like we don't have the best reputation overall. Some people are lukewarm, some people don't care, but there's a lot of like car salesman-y vibes about agents out there. And so we're already kind of up against the wall in that aspect. So we really want to avoid any anything that might send that signal, okay? So that's a very good reason. Um, why else? Think of it this way. If we make an analogy when you are... You know, I recently made a video about this, a real and a video, that there's no such thing as multitasking. There's only switching back and forth rapidly between two tasks. And what happens and why that's detrimental is you may feel like you're, you know, so ultra productive. But when you're doing that, you're actually losing focus, right? If I'm in the middle of a high value activity, like that's why I utilize technology to have like my work focus modes. So when I know I'm in the office at 530 in the morning, and from 5.30 till 10, I'm working on high value activities and can't be interrupted. But before I had those automated and I just had to remember to do it, I'm working on something, I'm writing a script for a new course and I'm like in the zone. And then all of a sudden, boop, I see this little boop, little text notification come in and I'm like, I'll get back to them later. Already, I'm like out of the zone. It, and then it takes me a good few minutes at least to get back into it. It's the same principle here. You might be really vibing with some people. You're making eye contact, you're talking, you're taking off ramps, which you know the importance of the off ramp. And someone else comes in, you talk to them, you've lost that energy, that connection. You can't get it back. You've lost it and they've lost it because they might really be vibing with you. And then you go to talk to someone else and now they're just kind of like, should I stay and keep talking to this guy? Should I look around the house? How long is he going to talk? Like, I don't, you know? So I believe once you engage with someone, you you see that through to its conclusion. And then, you know, if, if that means you can't welcome someone else in your open house or, you know, like it is what it is. Okay. Now on that note, it does take time and experience to get good enough a conversation to, to realize, is this person or people, are they worth continuing the conversation? Because when you do enough of these and you have enough conversations, you realize these people are tire kickers, they're not gonna buy anything and they just like to talk. And in that case, I need to wrap this up and talk to other people that I can actually engage as clients potentially.
because there are some people that just love to talk. It's, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you're not there to talk and, and, and make friends. You're there to, to, to prospect for business. And so if you get someone that's a nosy neighbor and isn't, and it's, oh, I just, I've always loved this house and I just want to, oh, we're not moving anytime soon. And maybe they're going to sell. No, we're not. And, and, but they just love talking. You got to wrap that up and engage with other people. Uh, and so, and sometimes like really friendly, outgoing people as agents, sometimes they tell me like, oh, Rob, I got no problem talking to people. I'm super friendly and outgoing. Like that could be a detriment because sometimes, you just want to have a nice chat. And because you're so friendly and outgoing, you're worried about saying, okay, well, you know, I've loved talking to you. I'm going to make sure I can help some other people here. Enjoy the home. Let me know if you have any questions. And, th and that's it because you got to go keep prospecting. So I would also encourage you, number one, once you engage with someone, see it through. But also really you're thinking like, is this worth my time right now? Could this be a potential client? Or do I need to wrap this up and engage with some other people? And that really only comes with time. But if there's a, if for some reason there's like a, there's no way this is going to be a client, they have an agent, they're not moving anytime soon. Oh, we were just driving, but some people just like to walk through houses. They just like to, they watch HGTV and they just like to look at houses and they're not moving anytime soon. Nothing wrong with that. You're not there to help those people. So that's one thing. Uh, now on the other aspect of it, if they say they're not working with an agent, so and Ken is doing the right thing, asking them, are you working with an agent? Why is it important that we ask that question? Because you don't want to step on, you know, the other agent's toes. And if they're not, uh, if they are working with the agent, you need to find out if it's, you know, a signed deal or are they just talking to a bunch of people or. Exactly. So number one, it would be unethical to pursue someone's business if they do have a rep agreement. Number two, we want to ask that question because if they're like, yeah, I have a rep agreement. Okay, cool. <laughs> Later, right? I'm going to go, I'm going to go work with some other people. So it's important to know that answer. Now, um, without being there and knowing the context, to me, if, if someone says I'm not working with an agent and then, it, and then you're trying to set the appointment and then they say, I am working with an agent. I would think they're probably not working with an agent and they're just not motivated as they're not as motivated as they tell you they are. Um, as well, an example. On that, sorry, on that specific uh, instance, the appointment was set. It was the follow-up call uh, a few hours before to make sure it was, everything was still good, the appointment was still scheduled. And that's when they told me, Oh yeah, I have a signed rep agreement with this other agent. But you asked them that question before. Mm -hmm. Well, when I asked them if they had a if they had a uh, a realtor, they said uh, no. So I set the appointment. When the appointment came up the next day, it was follow up say, hey, you know, looking forward to seeing you. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, we have an agent. We're showing things. We have a sign. You know, I asked if there was a signed agreement to reschedule and they said yeah we're resigning today oh so they was, signed with him that day yeah oh okay well the, I, I mean in that case then I, it just sounds like someone else beat you to the punch and, and i don't think there's anything else you could have done about that because you scheduled the appointment for the next day it sounds like someone else just happened to meet with them sooner um so you know that, that that's okay um now one thing i will recommend and this is actually something new that my team implemented that could help you there, Ken. Uh, we, we just implemented this a couple of weeks ago, and it's already worked a bunch of times. What we've done is we've created a one-page intent to engage agreement. Let me um, actually pull it up here. Okay, give me a second, and I'll show you. I'll show you exactly what that looks like. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to pull it up. Give me a second, Neil. Mm -hmm. All right. Hang tight. I'm um, just going to search on our database here. Uh, 
Thanks for your pay. This is gonna this is gonna be worth the wait, y'all. I'm telling you. Give me one second. Clients, let's see, buyers. Commitment to buy. Here we go. All right, let me get this up. All right, check it. Thanks for your patience. This is this is this is really cool. All right, can you all see this this document? Yeah, can you see it? Michelle, give me a thumbs up if you can see it. it says commitment to buy. So what we do um, is, you know, I have agents, you know, we bring these to open houses and it's called commitment to buy. It's a one page document because sometimes you might really hit it off with someone. You show some property. Hey, in order for us to be able to organize these showings for you, we're going to see some property set up an appointment. Just have this quick document. Uh, saying that we're going to, you know, intend to working together. I'll send you the official agreement later, but it's like 11 pages. So we're just going to go ahead and sign this now. And then I'll bring the official paperwork to the showing. And it's just a simple one page, the date, their name, their address, phone number, email. This letter is to provide notice of my intent to purchase using the Pathway Home Real Estate Group. That's the name of my company as my contracted agent. I understand the required paperwork will be sent to me via email within 24 to 48 hours of completion. But by signing this letter, I'm committing to purchasing with the Pathway Home Real Estate Group. Here's the commission that we ask for, as well as our transaction fee. And then they sign and the agent signs. And so it's not an official rep agreement, but by signing something, it is making more official in their mind that they're going to engage. And this has been really, really helpful. I'll tell you when I use this on the listing side as well. So this is really cool. So Ken, you might want to start bringing something like this to your open houses and making it up. Um, I actually had, this is a true story, uh, a listing appointment a couple of weeks ago. And I know they were interviewing other agents because they told me they were. And I was like, when's your appointment with that other agent? And they were like three o'clock. And I was like, okay, cool. How about we do a one o'clock? And they were like, okay, one o'clock works. I wanted to get in there first. So I go to listing, multi-million dollar listing in a super hot area here in Austin and had a great appointment, great appointment. We're wrapping it up. And I know that when I'm done, they're going to meet with the other agent. But I really, number one, understood what their problem was. Because remember, money is exchanged when problems are solved. Yes, no two couples are alike. No two people are alike. You got to get to know the people's problems that you're dealing with. In this situation, the problem was this was mom and dad's house. Mom and dad are getting older. They have to sell it. It's dated. They, it needs a ton of updates. And both people are out of town, right? They don't, they don't live in the area. And so I leveraged my local network, which I talk about as an agent. You really got to have a good local network. So my roofer, my contractor, my painter, my everything, hey, I can take care of this. I'll be able to come into the house, let them in and out. With your permission, I can schedule all this for you. Of course, you're going to confirm everything. You can use whoever you want. But I have a great local network if you'd like to leverage that. And they really saw the value that I provided for solving the specific problems they had. And I was like, and I was like, would you like me to, to get some of these people in here? I can get all of these contractors in here tomorrow to give you free estimates and we can get this ball rolling. And they were like, Rob, that'd be amazing. So I said, listen, in order for me to be able to do that, because that's gonna be a lot of time and effort. And I am so happy to do it because I love. I'm loving how we're vibing, and I know that we can do great work together. Uh, I do just have the simple one-page document, just a letter of intent saying that you do intend to list with me. I'll send you the official document later. It's like 11 pages. You can read through it. Let me know if you have any questions at all. But this says that we're officially going to be working together. I'm going to be your listing agent, and that will actually allow me to kind of do all this work on your behalf. Are you okay with that? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, and and you know, it'll kind of be up to you to tell the other agent that that we've we formed an agreement and they were like, no problem. Let's do it. So as we're wrapping that up, as we sign, bing bong, other agent rings the doorbell. 
He goes out, says, hey, I'm sorry you drove all the way over here. We just signed with the other agent. Thanks for your time. Came back in. So that one-page document really helped solidify in their mind, we are working with Rob. We just signed. And even though it wasn't the official representation agreement, in their mind, that was the official thing that engaged us to work together. Now, I did express to them very clearly, this is not the official listing agreement. It even says it right there, right? But this is really just a letter of intent saying, we're going to work together. I'll send you the official document later today. And any questions you have prior to signing that representation agreement, I want you to let me know so you can proceed with confidence. And so that letter like saved the day for me. And it's a really powerful tool. So I would recommend coming up with a one-page letter of intent to buy or sell. Uh, if, you bring, if you do it to buy, you can bring it to open houses. Um, and usually what I'll say is, look, if I'm going to organize these showings for you to be able to do that on your behalf, I just like to know that it's, you know, we're really going to be committed to each other. And of course, if at any time you're not happy with the level of service I'm giving you, you can let me know and we will terminate the agreement. I won't give you any pushback. It's never happened before. Okay, so Kenneth, that may be able to help you. Um, and then sometimes that's just, you know, the, it's just how the cookie crumbles and, um, nothing really, I, I don't know if anything could have been done in that situation for you, buddy, but I do applaud you and your, uh, your level of action and getting that appointment set. Okay, cool. All right. We got time for one more question before we roll. Maria, newly licensed. What is the most burning question on the front of your mind as you're diving into real estate? Um, honestly, I'm just like, how to get like, what do I like my first steps? Like, how do I start? I've been trying to figure it out. And I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. That's exactly why I created my sales course, because mm -hmm. Real estate is very wide. It is very deep. And getting your license and learning how to make money are two completely different things. Mm -hmm. You get your license and they're like, good luck. And, you, and, and then it's like, what do I do? <laughs> I have yep. no idea what to do. So I'll give you a couple tips now and then I'll show you how you can engage in some more info, okay? Okay. Now, most, almost, I think, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have nine people on this call. Seven of them are students in my sales course. So which one of you can unmute yourselves and tell me what is your number one job as an agent? Prospecting. Boom, Matt Wright, prospecting. That is your number one job. That is your only priority. Get clients as fast as you can. <laughs> Excuse me. And there can definitely be a sense of yeah, but I got to get my website and I got to my business cards and I don't know if I'm ready to talk to, like, just get clients. It's trial by fire. Learn as you go. You know what's the best way to learn how to swim? Get thrown into the water with some swimmies, okay? Like, you're going to learn how to swim, okay? I'm going to, I give you the swimmies. You're not going to drown, all right? But getting clients is your number one job. You're going to really perfect your buyer presentation when you have your first buyer presentation in two days. That's when you're really going to learn how to do it. Um, and so number one, you have to prospect. So I'll tell you the best way to prospect, I believe, at any point in your career, especially as you're a new agent, is open houses. And I recommend six open houses a month. Remember, in an open house, you're calling another agent in your company that has a listing and they don't have the time or interest to host that open house themselves. You're looking for unrepresented buyers to walk in. So like Kenneth said, one of the questions you ask is, do you have an agent? Are you working with an agent? And you're looking for people that are coming in that are interested in buying, that don't have an agent that you can work with. Okay, my first three deals came from hosting open houses for other agents. I made over $45,000 in one week from my first three deals closing all at the same time from people I met at open houses. And in Earth to Orbit, which is my sales course, I teach you the script to use to request the open house, the script to use at the open house, the appointment setter script. You get the buyer presentation template, all of it. It's all there to teach you how to do it. But Maria, the best thing you could be doing is hosting open houses because when you're hosting open houses, you get to talk to real people. You get to talk to people that have real estate on their mind. You're talking to prospects. You're sharpening your skills, right? You're going to mess up a little bit in the beginning and that's okay because that's the only way you can get better. But today is, you said you're already signed on with your company? 
All right. So today is uh, Tuesday. Wednesday is the day of the week. I recommend people secure their open houses. So I would recommend tomorrow you get, so you get two open houses for the weekend, one Saturday, and one Sunday. All right. Matt Wright is a perfect example uh, of that. Right. Matt, go ahead and tell Maria what happened at your first weekend of open houses after you we engaged together. I actually secured two buyer buyer agreements uh, appointments at the open house, and that, which turned into buyers, one of which already closed. Boom. Happened right away. Steve says, I was taught you want to focus on getting listings and avoid working with buyers because they waste a lot of your time. Um, Steve, how many... Go ahead and put in the chat how many listing and buyers you've closed using that method in the past 12 months. I'd be interested to know that. Um, what I can tell you is in any market, you do want listings. But here's the thing with listings. Uh, and I know because I do a lot of listings, right? Um, in any market, you want listings. Listings take a while. From the time you have a listing appointment, it's going to be three to six months until you get paid from that listing. You're going to have to get the house ready. You know, you don't know how long it's going to take given market conditions. And if he says, he says buyers waste a lot of time. I think if you're working with buyers that waste your time, that's your fault as an agent. That's your fault if your buyers are wasting your time. I can tell you I've had three buyer closings this past month that were all super easy and incredibly time efficient and quite pleasant to deal with because those are the type of buyers that I work with. And when I get a whiff of buyers that will waste my time, I simply don't engage with them. And so it's your job as an agent to learn how to screen your clients and make sure you set proper expectations, right? That's really, really important. Uh, one of the services that we offer in Appointment Autopilot, when you get that pre-listing pre-buyer pre survey, asks, level of one to 10, what's your motivation? Three. All right, well, we're probably not going to work together then, <laughs> you know, um, working with people that might be thinking about buying maybe if the perfect house presents itself versus we need to move. Uh, if you choose to show property to people without a representation agreement and that aren't pre-qualified yet with a lot of agents do, that's your own fault for them wasting your time. Okay, but if you do it right and you know how to pre-screen your clients, then for sure. And so Steve is not wrong, okay? I want, I want to preface by saying Steve is not wrong. In any market, you do want listings. Seller's market, buyer's market, you do want listings because you don't got to run, run around and show property. So Steve, you're 100% right there, buddy. And Steve is also 100% right in saying that buyers can waste a lot of your time. Yet again, I would say if you have buyers that are wasting your time, that is your fault as an agent because you didn't screen them properly. You got to have a rep agreement. They have to be pre-qualified. And if you're actively showing property, they need to be ready to move within the next two to three months. And you need to be certain of that. If none of those things are in place, you shouldn't be working with them. And I think agents that do have buyers that waste their time are so desperate for business that they don't have enough uh, expectations, respect for their own time. Like for example, I can't tell you, you know, whenever I have a listing that's, um, over a million dollar listing, I usually recommend to my clients that we, we, we mandate that for an agent that schedules a showing on that listing, they must submit a pre-approval letter. They must submit the pre-approval letter to even schedule the showing because there's a lot of window shoppers in that price range. They just want to see what a million dollar house looks like. And it is amazing to me on my last million dollar listing, million dollar plus listing in Round Rock, I would say out of every 10 showing requests we got, two of them submitted a pre-approval letter. You know what the other eight said? We haven't been pre-approved yet. Why the beep are you showing property, million dollar property to people that already, you don't even know if they can afford it. And you're showing property to them? Shame on you. And shame on you for trying to waste me and my seller's time getting them out of the house so you can just show your property because they fit. That's ridiculous, right? <laughs> That's just, come on, man. So Steve is not wrong. But again, you know, I would say in this market, buyers are where it's at, Do You know what I'm saying? It is the time for buyers. We are back, okay? 
my parents, we just closed on a beautiful home, right? We just, <laughs> Steve, you know how I feel, brother. You've known me for a while and I appreciate you being here and I'm glad to see you back, buddy. Um, my parents, right? They were looking for houses for a while. And then finally they saw the one that we wanted to see. We showed it. I wrote it up, up an offer that day. We got it for 20,000 under asking. And I got them a new roof and all sorts of concessions. I got them a two, one buyer uh, rate buy down and they moved in with $40,000 worth of equity because we're in a buyer's market right now. I had another client, right? That said, Hey Rob, I'm looking for a property in this 55 and over community. Uh, it's going to be a cash deal. My home just closed and I have to move within a month. Well, that's a great client, right? First property we made an offer on boom. I got it for $22,000 under asking closed in three weeks. It was like a, almost an $11,000 commission. That was super easy, right? Now at the beginning of my career, I didn't know all this stuff. And that's a great benefit of engaging with me and my sales course is you don't have to make all the mistakes I made. And I used to do that. And then I realized, you know what? It is a waste of time to work with buyers that aren't really super motivated. So in that instance, I would say, again, Steve is right that they can waste your time. But if you know how to pre-screen them, you get them pre-approved, you get that representation agreement signed, you're in a good position. And remember, gang, a bad client is better than no client at all. Take it from me for sure. Now, I want to make sure you know how to engage with uh, Earth to Orbit if you want to. And I'm also going to tell you why now is a really good time to do that. So what you would want to do, and I'm going to type it in the chat. And most of you already know this, but I'm just going to type it in any, any way here. Is you want to go to orbit.robstein.com. And again, this is any agent, any brokerage, any level. But especially for newer agents like Maria, I think this would be really perfect for you. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and it's going to take you right to the landing page. You can watch the, the three minute video, which tells you exactly what the course is about. You can see all the modules that are included and all the bonuses. You can see testimonials from real agents. You can learn more about your instructor, yours truly, and Right now, it is a $997 course pay in full, but we do have a $97 a month payment plan, which is extremely affordable at $97 a month. Now, here's the other reason why the next two weeks is the optimal time to engage. Now, most of you have heard me talk about the fact that I paid a lot of money to transfer Earth to Orbit into a new platform called Lightspeed. And I'm flying out to Las Vegas in two weeks to finish recording that content. When I do that, two things are going to happen. The price of the course is going to increase by 50% because I'm adding an, a lot of content, even more content in there. So it's going to be $1,500 instead of 1000 Number two, it's going to be a yearly fee instead of a once-lifetime fee. Now, anyone that is currently engaged or engages with Earth to Orbit before that time will be grandfathered in. So you'll just pay once and have lifetime access. Even if you do the $97 a month payment plan, you do $97 a month for one year, and then you've got lifetime access forever. Once we move into light speed, it's going to be a yearly subscription model. Now, another cool thing about light speed is we're also going to have a uh, team and brokerage pricing. So like Michelle, if you've got some people in there for a low monthly cost, like a very low monthly cost, you can actually add on multiple seats if other people want to actually be able to engage with the course. So that's going to be really easy. Uh, but for those of you like Maria, I would say now would be a great time because if you were to wait longer, it's going to be a lot more expensive. And uh, But you're still going to get all the great benefits of light speed that we're bringing in there. And again, you can do that right at orbit.robstein.com. Dot com. Michelle, thank you for your, your kind words there. Uh, and there's no shortage of amazing results that agents are getting when they implement. Because remember, knowledge without implementation is completely useless. You got to implement. So thank you, everyone, for your time today. Maria, best of luck. I hope you choose to engage. And either way, you can come right back here next week. Steve, it's good to see you again, man. I hope to see you again next time as well. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful income-producing week. And we'll see you right here next week on the next episode of the Impossible to Fail Mastermind.